Welcome back. My name is Jessica D. Perez. I'm a plein air painter painting in the open air. Follow me as we adventure out in the field. Thank you for joining me today as we revisit all of the fun adventures we've had this year on Out in the Field. For our very first episode, we got to meet and paint with artist Byron Carr, who's been painting for about 30 years. This is when we learned our first lesson of Out in the Field. Remember to double check all of your supplies. I find this episode really set us off on a good foot with all of the great advice that we received from him, such as learning to draw before you paint and working from the general to the specific. And most importantly, Byron said that you've got to stop being a journalist and you need to be a poet, and that you can only instill this into the painting yourself. This is a lesson that we've carried throughout all of the episodes, and we will continue to do so for future ones. With that first episode being a tough act to follow, it became even more difficult than I expected on a rainy day. So we decided to take to the woods for some tree shelter and start with a sketch, which then I brought to the studio to paint since it would be a bit too challenging to paint in the rain. I think this episode was a good example to show how painting can be a multi-step project. As I started off with a drawing and then moved over to acrylics, it was a great show of the direction of brush stroke making all the difference and allowed to achieve a feeling and look of the rain falling down. Since I was so kindly invited to paint, I decided to take a trip to Apollo Vineyards and I had a chance to chat with the owner, Michael Apollo, a learning about all of the history and capturing a scene onto canvas. If you get lost in the details, you lose sight of the overall picture. I used large brush strokes for the majority of this painting and worried about the details later. I also talked about how painting is not just challenging of capturing what's in front of you, but what of you you also want to say and what you want to express. You have to work in a changing environment. With small rain clouds, it could change the lighting so quickly, but you want to mark that light first if you want to keep the original inspiration. Aside from brief panic of some raindrops, it was pretty relaxing painting in the vineyard, and the sunset painting was a whole different experience. When you have to capture fleeting moments, you must do so quickly. And with the amount of difficulties I had trying to capture this sunset, I really had to play to my strength of painting efficiently. After spending so much time looking for a place to park and paint, we finally landed in the perfect spot just in the nick of time. But that wasn't the end of it. After being driven away by hordes of mosquitoes, once I got back to the studio, I finally managed to do the final touches and made something beautiful out of chaos. It was surreal and it was still, and it came out of panic. That's about having the experience, taking what you can from it, and making that poetry out of what you find. With a bit more traveling, I found myself in New York City. Having the chance to paint in plein air at Central Park was a blast, though it was very hot, which led me to do my final touches inside. But nonetheless, it was a beautiful day. On that trip, I was initially delivering a commission piece to a client and still got to enjoy the surroundings of the city while I had the chance to paint. Being able to slow it down after so much travel, I attended the Greeley Park Art Fair. The first day was really nice apart from the humidity. It was really good to talk about out in the field with those who visited and I even won second place in the Nashua Area Artist Association competition with my piece, Peer Into the Past. With a supposed hurricane on the way, it ended up being a one-day event, but nonetheless, a great experience. That rainy day allowed me to enjoy a day off and spend that time with my family. Taking in the moments is really important, especially when you take small traveling trips for painting, just like when I went to Pink Up Notch to go see Crystal Cascades. It was just calling my name. And little did I know that this would be the start of something big. I love painting water and waterfalls, and it's so enchanting. This was such a fun plein air painting. I had to tackle such a gorgeous area on a bigger canvas that you saw later in another episode. Having the opportunity to go to the Portsmouth Art Walk was another one of the fun adventures that I've had. 
It was wonderful talking to other artists and discussing other artworks, looking at the challenges while painting, all the things that come along from start to finish of the artist lifestyle. There are moments in my plein air that I found myself with challenges I hadn't faced before, such as loss of control, painting on a different surface, and not feeling very comfortable in my surroundings. I felt defeated and frustrated, and I can't expect to be 100% successful, but I did learn from those lessons, and that's what you have to take with you. When we face these challenges, this is how we get stronger. And when we face these challenges and we find a new way to fight through it, that's how we get better. You learn from nature. Nature is not just what you see, it's what you feel. It's what you experience, and it's how you respond to it. After feeling defeated, spending the rest of my time soaking in the environment and really calming my nerves really gave me the opportunity to soak in that lesson that I was learning and to take it with me when I went back to that painting in another episode. There's always going to be a painting in your life where things feel impossible, where moments feel too challenging to overcome, and it's not necessarily expertise that gets you there. What gets you there is perseverance and consistency, not giving up, keeping your ground going. You are allowed to make decisions that completely take you in a different direction. As long as that direction is healthy and safe, you actually have a lot more control than you think. Don't let life control you. It's not what happens to us, it's how we respond to it. While going through those challenges, I definitely felt brave and decided I was going to take on more. At the market at the beginning of this episode, I was doing a small painting demonstration. It was nice, it was good to have that moment in front of others to be able to show the things that I do. Then it was time to stretch that canvas. 40 by 60 is not a joke. It felt so daunting taking on this large painting. I definitely had the energy for it, but when I started, I realized how big that canvas truly was. Recreating crystal cascades was like revisiting the moment of that plein air painting. It felt like I was basking in the water and the sun all over again and taking on the colors and the lights and the changes that were happening that entire time I was there. It was nice to see the different colors that I could saturate and I could even work on the light that I felt needed a little more glow. Recreating that experience was like reliving it, and that's why it had to be big. When I get re-inspired, I like to go into nature and take on different challenges. When I took on to the Wildcat Falls Conservation Area, it was such a meditative experience with painting in nature and truly helped bring some inspiration back to me as I went to paint my other paintings as well. Speaking of which, after this plein air, I went back to the studio to work on White Mountain Paradise. And remember, that's all about having confidence in yourself, trusting the process, and making sure to capture the emotion of what it felt like to be standing right in front of that waterfall. That larger canvas definitely took a few weeks to work on and a lot of passes and revisits. But you know, painting plein air paintings in between those breaks of a larger painting are really good ways to refresh in your inspiration and refresh in what you've been learning from nature. When I went out with Jessica Flick to paint at the lake, it was such a great experience to once again, like Byron Carr, be with another artist and truly see how their process was. We were faced with some winds that came off the lake and it kind of drove us to stop painting a little sooner than we wanted, but it was such a great experience seeing how the winds changed the light and being able to see her new studio, seeing how she has also a mobile studio. Jessica Flick really is an inspiration for the independent artists that has adventures abound. Having worked on it here and there, I've been steadily making progress on my largest painting of the year. And after the many days of hard work and focus towards it, making sure a poet and not just a painter, and not just what I saw, but how I felt, I managed to get it done. 
And when it was finished, I made it just in time to take it to the Paradise City Arts Festival in Massachusetts. It was a wonderful three-day event where accepted artists get to display and sell their work as well as get to know other artists and expand their horizons. It was my first time at an indoor festival as I've mainly been attending outdoor fairs. But I definitely prefer the shelter of the indoors and it was such a cool experience to share my artwork with many of those who had come by to check out the event and many of the other artists who participated as well. Taking on challenges is clearly one of the things I like to do as I worked on Lamplit, which was one of my first painting, sort of painting marathon. In the span of around three days, I had painted four pieces, beginning at my very own doorway on a cool night. I found this one to be a fun challenge with trying to capture a scene in the darkness while also making sure to express the colors hidden in the shadows of the night. With winter on the way at that point, it was getting much darker much earlier, but I wasn't about to let the darkness be my limit, and neither should you. After the darkness will come the light again. Waking up nice and early for a sunrise, you never know what you're going to get, but that day we lucked out with this gorgeous sunrise. Facing the challenge of the light quickly changing, and also not having much time to paint with my busy schedule, I've gotten to learn how to speed up my process and what steps I need to prioritize while painting, such as composition and light placement. And with the help of my fluorescent paints, I was able to bring this beautiful sunrise to life on canvas. Working with what's in front of you when you don't go too far from home is another way to stay creative. With caffeinated creativity, you don't have to go far. You just take what you love and put it right in front of you. Maybe touch upon enjoying to paint what you love and having with reflections. It was really nice to just indulge in the moment and be comfortable while still being outside and painting and learning from the natural light. Soaking in as much of a fall color as I can before winter strikes completely, I decided to head out to my own backyard and find the perfect next subject. What a special session of painting, not just because I love fall colors, but because my daughter joined me and she was inspired to make more art of her own. I love looking forward to hopefully doing more of these paintings with her by my side and perhaps display her work on another episode. We're out in a field, fire in the sky. Getting back into the groove of painting was a bit of a challenge. I've had such a busy schedule doing so many different things, but painting is really where my passion lies. So I brought back that fluorescent paint because I remembered how well it helped me the first time. And as that sun rose, sure enough, that sky was on fire one more time. This was a time where I had to remember, you know, I gotta practice, I gotta be patient, and I have to be consistent with what I remember doing before. You take your time to approach and then you get back into it when you need to. There's no reason to rush yourself, but take your time and remember what you've been learning and apply those lessons this time around. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you do like these videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, share this video, make a comment, and let me know what you would like to see in the upcoming episodes. January is going to be a bit of a break, but we're going to set up a new place so that we can take on new challenges. We're going to continue with these new challenges out in the field, but we're also going to be taking them indoors at my new studio location. I'll be spending the month of January setting up that new spot, setting up new ways to share my videos in progress, and take on these journeys alongside with you. And until next time, out in the field.